Kantamuktavali, Rajastriyo Parivestito Vijayate Gopala Chudamani. E shi shama shundar shikar shikar smira hasa mili manohara radhika rasika mama kipanidi sapriya chanana kinkarin kuru tvai vasmi tvai vasmi na jivami tvai avina iti vigyai raditam nayamam charanam tikam yat kinkare shubhav saka uka kamani nitya parasha purusha sushakandamali Tashakadara Sanidi Visabanu Jayas, Takeli Kanja Bavanangana Majani Shama, Bajamira Dhara Ravinda Nitram, Smaramira Dha Madura Smitasham, Vadhamira Dha Karuna Vadajam, Tatoma Manashti Gati Nakapi, Vaketa Vahino Yapara Dalakshai, Shiptas Chaka Madi Taranga Maji Kripa Mai Twang Sharanam Prapana Vrindi Namasti Charanara Vindam Kanaka Jalagatro Nila Sobagya Nitro Migu Malabarabalo Malati Kundamalo Taruna Taruna Vesho Nilam Pitam Badesho Smaraneni Brittany Kunji Radhika Krishna Chandra Vancha Kalpa Trubhyascha Kripa Shindu Vaibhacha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Vadirhara Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Nandavat Pranam devotees. <clears throat> um, so I think we'll get started because the kata is a little bit long. On Tuesday, uh, coming up this week, I think that's the 16th, it is the appearance day of Sri Ramachandra. Lord Ramachandra is called a Paravasta avatar. The word Paravasta means that Lord Krishna has unlimited incarnations. But three incarnations are called Paravasta, means they are the sort of pinnacle of the Lord's incarnations. Uh, in the Lagu Bhagavatam Rita, they're described, Narasinga Rama Krishneshu Sad Aishwarya Purana. So Lord Narasinga Dev, Sri Ramachandra Bhagavan and Sri Krishna, they are Sad Aishwarya Purana. It means they have all of the six opulences in full more than any other manifestation of Bhagavan. In other words, all Bhagavan's incarnations have six opulences, but the comparison has been given. If you had a dimmer switch on a light and you could progressively illuminate a room when you get to the full illumination of the room, that is compared to Narasimha, Ramachandra, and Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna, of course, he has qualities that even those Paravasta avatars do not have. So it's been written, Bhagavat Stavad Asadarana, Aishwarya Madhuja Tattva Visay Swarup Paramananda. That Sri Krishna, his qualities are Asadharan. Sadharan means ordinary, not ordinary, but it means, what should I say? Sadharana means like everything else. Asadhara means uncommon. So in the category of God, because you cannot say God's activities or God's form or God's existence is like everyone else's. So in the category of Godhood, Krishna is Asadharana. He's uncommon even in the category of God. He has four specialities that no other form of Bhagavan has. So his Venu Maduri means the exceptional nature of his flute playing. The full import or purport of what that means can't be understood just by simply saying he has flute playing. You can't really digest what the full import of that is. And today is not a day to discuss that. Krishna's exceptional beauty, his Rupa Maduri, his Prem Parikar Maduri, it means his associates and the way his associates exchange love with him. And Lila Madhuri means 
the pastimes which he performs in order to make the love of those associates, his beauty and his flute playing manifest in a particular pastime. So these four qualities, uh, they are very unique in Krishna. And Aishwarya, Madhudya, Tatvavisej. The word Aishwarya means power and opulence like God. The ability to have all of that, to have the opulence and power of God, but to cover it with Madhudya. The word Madhudya means a human-like sweetness, is a unique quality also in Krishna. Madhudya, Aishwarya, Tattva Visesh, to be able to take these two realities, the word Tattva means realities, and blend them in such a way, Krishna is definitely God, but he's blended his Godhood and his human-like quality in such a way that it creates the sweetness of the pastimes that we know of related to Krishna. Sri Ramachandra has been described in the Brahma Samhita. Brahmadi Muteshu Kala Niyamena Tishtan Nanavataru Akarod Bhuvaneshu Kintu Krishna Swayam Sambhavat Paramam Pumanyo Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Bajami That the first Ram Adi, the very first incarnation from Krishna is Lord Ram. Not in a sequential order, not a historical order, it means ontologically the first major Leela expansion of Krishna is Lord Ram. If we do not have Dharma established, if there is no idea what is Dharma, Dharma means the ultimate spiritual reality. If that's not established, you don't have a basis to find esoteric or deeper considerations within the context of Godhood. First, it has to be established, there's God. And even within the context of Leela's, being performed by God, there has to be a Leela in which God is perfect in every single thing. So the Leela of Lord Ram is like that. It's called Mariada Purushottam Leela. Mariada means a high degree of respect because the perfection of every single category of existence is manifest in Lord Ram. And the Leelas he performs he manifests all of those various perfections. So obviously the source material for understanding the leelas of Lord Ram are the itihasa, it means a history. The word itihasa literally means iti ahasa, something written exactly as it happened. Because Srimad Bhagavatam, though it is our main scripture, it is not a history. There are some historical events described, but Srimad Bhagavatam is not a history. It is called a Puran. The word Purana means Pura Api Navam. The word Pura means old or ancient. Pura Api Navam. Even though it's ancient writings, they have applicable uh, application today. So Pura Api Navam. Though something is written in ancient times, it has application today. That's called Purana. Iti ahasa means iti ahasa, something that is written exactly as it happened. And there are two main itihasas. One is called Mahabharat. So everybody's heard of Mahabharat. And the other is called Ramayan. The Mahabharat was compiled by Sri Vyasadeva, and the Ramayan was compiled by Valmiki. So Valmiki's Ramayan is the standard of what is Ramayan. Every other commentary, every other excerpt, or every other writing of a Ramayan is based on Valmiki's Ramayan. There are many other versions of the Ramayan. So for instance, in South India especially, which I will draw a lot from today, you find the Kamban Ramayan, which is written by one very great Saint called Kambar, right? He wrote one compilation of the Ramayan based on Valmiki's Ramayan called Kamban Ramayan. And there, there are many, it's written in Tamil, but there's many, many pastimes of Ram which are told, which are expanded from Valmiki's Ramayan. Understand? Then there's the commentations, like the commentator Govindaraj in South India. He wrote amazing commentary 
on Valmiki's Ramayan. Then there's Bhava Bhuti. Bhava Bhuti wrote what is called Uttara Ramacharit. Right? Uttara Ramacharit is a poet, a poem that was written about the Ramayan, which has so many sweet pastimes of Lord Ram as well. One of the most famous versions of the Ramayan, of course, is Ram Charit Manas, which is written in Hindi by one saint named Tosidas. Um, but there are very unique features that are in Valmiki Ramayan also that you don't find in other Ramayans. For instance, even though the Ramayana of Tulsidas is probably the most popular, in South India, obviously the ones I mentioned are popular, but the Ramcharit Manas of Tulsidas is probably the most prominent in all of Northern India. And usually anyone who speaks Ramayan Kata speaks from Ramcharit Manas, right? Uh, because actually Valmiki's Ramayan, 24,000 verses, seven different sections, right? It's, it's a little bit, Difficult and it's a Sanskrit work, it's a little bit difficult. But Ramcharit Manas is very sweetly written in Hindi language, common language, so it's very easy to do kata from Ramcharit Manas. But in the Ramcharit Manas, the Uttra Khan, there are seven different books in Ramayana Bala Khan, Ayodhya Khan, Aranya Khan, Kishkinda Khan, um, Sundra Khan, Yudha Khan, and Uttra Khan. This book, Uttarakhand, is very special because it sets up the entire template for what goes on in the Ramayana. So it's very difficult to understand the context of Ramayana if you don't have Uttarakhand. You understand? But the Uttarakhand is also extremely painful in some ways. It's much like the section of Srimad Bhagavatam in which Akrur comes to Vrindavan to take Krishna to Mathura. So Uttara Khan contains the banishment of Sita and other things. So it's very difficult. So a lot of the devotees of Ram, they don't like to recite from Uttara Khan. You understand? But if you have to recite Valmiki's Ramayana as it is, you must include Uttara Khan. And I'll focus on Uttara Khan today because it gives the overall template of Ramayana. So before I get started, I want to say some special prayers that are done in relation to recitation of Ramayana. So, Mangala Bhavana Mangala Hari Travasudasarata Ajira Vihari Arati Sri Ram Mainaki Kirita Kali Siya Piki Gavata Brahma De Muni Narada Valmiki Vigyan Vishara. So the first prayer is very commonly recited in relation to Ramayan. So it says Mangla Bhavana Mangla Hari. Mangla Bhavan means that abode of all auspiciousness. A Mangla Hari. And that person who removes anything inauspicious. Dravasu, Dravasu means whose heart is completely melted in compassion for his devotees. Hmm? Hmm? Dasarata Ajir Vihari. Ajir means like a courtyard or backyard. So Dasarata Ajir Vihari means the absolute truth. Sri Ram, who is so compassionate to his devotees that his heart is always melting in affection for them and who is the abode of all auspiciousness and removes anything inauspicious, that person is playing in the courtyard as a small child in the courtyard of Dasarat Maharaj. Then there's a special arati that is done for the book Ramayan. So arati Sri Ramayana Jiki. This Ramayan is worth our worship because it is Kirit Kalit Lalita Syapiti. It is so beautiful and it contains so many charming narrations of Bhagavan. It is so beautiful and so wonderful. Even great personalities like Lord Brahma, Narada Muni, and Vigyani. Vigyani means that realized person, Valmiki Rishi, has also recited it. So we want to take their blessings before we begin to recite also Ramayan or any Ram Kata. So Valmiki is the author of Ramayan. 
and the history of Valmiki is explained in the Skanda Purana. It mentions that Sri Varunadev had a son named Harit. Harit was a very small boy and he was very charming. And even all the Devitas, they used to, when they would visit Varuna, they would play with Harit. He was so charming, he was so beautiful. But once the four Kumaras came, and they wanted to speak philosophical things to Varana, uh, Varuna Dev and to the people in the court of Varuna Dev. So while they were speaking philosophy, Harit was playing very nearby. And he was imitating all the sounds of various kinds of birds and animals. So the four Kumaras, they became disturbed. You might notice a trend here that the four Kumaras, right? They become easily disturbed by things, right? But they become the catalyst for many amazing things. They were the catalyst for the descent of Jai and Vijay so that there would be the appearance of Nishringadev and the appearance of Lord Ram and the appearance of Sri Krishna because they came uh, by the arrangement of the four Kumaras, Jai and Vijay came as Hiranyaksha, Hiranyakasipu, also Ravan and Kumbhakan and Sishupal and Dantabakra. So the four Kumaras were instrumental in as a catalyst in making that Leela happen. Similarly here, they will be a catalyst in the manifestation of Ramayan because they cursed Harit because we are speaking philosophical, very important topics of Dharma, but you're acting in such a way that it imitates the behavior of hunters. You should go and live among the hunter community. So from that time by the mm, curse of the four Kumaras, Harit was banished from the kingdom of Varuna, though he was a small boy, and he was sent to live among the hunter community. So one hunter family, they adopted Hari because he was so beautiful and so charming, they adopted him and they decided to raise him. They didn't know his name was Hari, they didn't know who he was, but because he was very beautiful, like a jewel, they called him Ratna. So he had the name Ratnakar, you understand? Because he was very, very beautiful and charming, this family named him Ratnakar. As Ratnakar grew up in the hunter community, he developed the habits and behaviors of the hunter community. So he would go out and he would do hunting and he would do all these things. And the hunters were very expert at making bird calls and all of these things to trap their prey. But it happened that a great famine came. And during the time of that great famine, it was very difficult to even do hunting because the animals in the course of that drought, they were very scarce. So many of the hunters, they either moved away from the area they lived or they turned into other activities, which were criminal activities. So Ratnakar himself also did that. He became a dikoit. So he would rob people, he would do other things, but he would always say, what I'm doing, I'm doing to repay the kindness of my family, my adopted mother and father. Now he had his own wife, he had his own children. So I'm doing all of these things for their benefit. So once these Saptarishis, they were coming that way. Saptarishis mean the great seven sages. They were coming that way. And this Ratnakara stopped them. And he said, I know that sadhus are always the beneficiaries of so many high class of donations from so many kings and wealthy persons. So I'm here today to rob you. So the Saptarishis told, listen, it is the nature of sadhus that they don't keep money because it's said that a sadhu should not keep a bank account, so to speak. You understand? Real ancient sadhus, they didn't keep bank accounts and so forth. So it's described, yagna yagna, uh, panta panta dana pratigraha. The duty of a sadhu, Brahmin, is that they should perform yagna themselves and engage others in yagna. They should study the scriptures and they should teach scriptures. And done Pratigraha, they can receive donations, but Pratigraha means they should also give those donations back to the community in various ways. So the Saptari, she's told, listen, our wealth is always kept in the Kamandalu, which is like a water pot, but we also keep donations here. Here, you examine these Kamandalu. So when Ratnakar looked at all the Kamandalus, he didn't see anything. So there's a special meaning to this. It means that they gave him Darshan of real wealth. Real wealth is to be a kinchin this kinchin. It means to be completely self-satisfied. 
that you're not dependent on anything else, that you're atmaram, completely satisfied in the self. So no need to try to depend on money, riches, this thing, that thing. So by showing the Kamandalus to Ratnakar, they were showing, here is our wealth. Our wealth is our bhajan. Our wealth is our realizations. Our wealth is our austerities. If you'll take this wealth, you'll be greatly benefited. But Ratnakar, he thought, no, you are cheaters. Because this is how anybody who's in material consciousness, they will think I am a cheater. Everyone must be a cheater. So he thought, oh, Saptarishis are cheating me. They have wealth, but they're hiding it on their person. So he told, I will search each of you. And in this way, I will find the real wealth because I know that you're carrying some wealth. So then the Saptarishis told, listen, to try to disrobe us, to search us, would be a very, very great sin, Mahapap. So before you engage in this activity, we know, because Saptarishis, they could read his mind, we know that you feel that you're doing all of these things for the benefit of your family. Why don't you go back? Because the sin that you will incur from this activity is so great that why don't you go back and first ask your dearly beloved wife, children, your adopted parents, your in-laws now, ask them if they will partake in a share of the sinful reaction for what it is that you're about to do. So Ratnakar told the sin, you're trying to trick me. You want me to go back to my home and in that way you will escape. Because again, this is how cheater mentality is. You always think I'm trying to get over on somebody so everybody's trying to get over on me. So he said, yes, I will go. I will prove to you that actually my family is very supportive of what I do. Therefore, what I'm doing also is a kind of dharma. <laughs> right? So he's trying to speak some bogus philosophy now. But to make sure you don't escape, he took twines from the trees and he said, allow, I will tie you to this tree, right? And in this way, I know you cannot escape. So the Saptarishis, they are so powerful. They could have easily dismissed Ratnaka and everything, but they wanted to give him a blessing. So they allowed themselves to be bound to a tree by these tree twines, right? These vines that were hanging from the tree and they allowed themselves to be bound. Now, Ratnakar went back to his home and he first approached his in-laws and he asked, listen, my dear mother-in-law, father-in-law, you've all come to live with me and daily I go out and I have to rob and do so many things. And these things obviously incur sinful activity. But my dear mother-in-law, father-in-law, uh, because you've come uh, to join our family because I've married your daughter, then certainly you will take part in the sinful reactions that have to come from these things. So the mother-in-law and father-in-law said, oh, certainly not. We've become in our elder age. We've given our daughter to, to you, her hand in marriage. And now you've taken responsibility for our daughter. But that means also taking responsibility for her parents. So this is your duty. There is nothing special about your taking care of us. We're doing our own duty and our own dharma and our elder age. We don't want to take any of your sinful reactions. So he thought, it's possible. They're telling the truth. I've married their daughter. They came here of that accord, not on their own. So then he went to his own mother and father. But my own mother and father, adopted mother and father, they certainly will take some of my sinful reactions. So he went and he asked, listen, mata, pita, mother, father, please tell me that all that I go out and do it is also for your benefit. And tell me that you will take some of the sinful reactions. The mother and father said, listen, though we did not give birth to you, we raised you from a small child. How much did we suffer to make sure you were clothed and fed and protected? Our duty has already been done. What debt you have to us, you can never repay. And now still on top of that, you want to add sins to our lives in our older age? So he said, yes, yes. Because my parents are elder, they should not have to take responsibility for anything. But my children, my children are very young. So he went to his children, he gathered, he said, oh son, oh daughter, listen, your father has gone out to provide for you, to protect you, to make sure you have everything. And I've had to accumulate some sins in what I've done. So being my son and my daughter, 
my own flesh and blood. Please tell me that you will take some of the sinful reactions. They said, listen, Father, what is the duty of a father and a mother? Did our children, did we ask to come here? I also asked my mother that one time <laughs> because my mother was chastising me about something. And I said, well, I didn't ask to come here. And my mother said, every time you go to the refrigerator, though, you're glad to be here, though, aren't you? So, so that didn't work out very well. So anyway, Ratnakar's children also brought up the argument. Listen, we did not ask you to come here. We've come here by karma, and it is your duty to provide and to protect for us. Where is it written that any mother and father should not take care of their children? And now you want us to take your sins and grow up with the burden of your sins for what you do? So then our lives will also be inauspicious? So he thought, yes, yes. So my in-laws, they have excuse. My own parents have excuse. My children have also excuse. But my wife is like one body with me. My wife, certainly, she will take my sinful reactions. So he went and he told the wife, listen, darling, I've spoken to your parents. I've spoken to my parents and I've spoken to our children. They all have very valid reasons why they will not share in any portion of the sinful activity that I'm incurring from the activities that I'm doing to maintain our family. But in life, everything we do should be 50-50. So I'm asking, at least you can take 50% of whatever sinful actions come to me as my darling wife, my Dharma Patni. Right, you will take 50% of any of those sinful activities in order to give me some relief. The wife told, listen, Dharma Patni means one submissively serves the husband as Dharma, but that Dharma's to Bhagavan. You understand? Dharma's to Bhagavat Pranitam. Dharma means to do Dharma towards Bhagavan. So if I'm trying to do Dharma by serving you to do Dharma for Bhagavan, why do you want me to take 50% of sins? How will I do Dharma to Bhagavan if I'm also taking your sins? Do I go with you to the forest? Do I rob anyone? Do I steal from anyone? But when you come home, nicely any meal is prepared. I'm also treating you very affectionately. But now you're asking me to take all of your sins? <laughs> Even 50% of your sins? So then at that time, Ratnakar thought, Listen, though I have so much love and affection for this entire family, not even my wife, who's half my body, is willing to take even 1% of the sins that I'm incurring from all of these things. Immediately, he remembered the words of the sages and that they had arranged for him to go back and ask this question. So immediately in his heart, enlightenment came. So immediately, he left his house. He was always carrying his bow and arrow with him. But when he left the front door of his home this time, he dropped that bow and his arrows right in front of his home. And going without any weapons, he went back to the place where he had tied the Saptarishis. When he got back, he saw the Saptarishis were all standing in meditation. He said, but I left, I had bound you to a tree. So the Saptarishis then told the sin, Ratnakar, at that time, we didn't want to disturb you in any way because we wanted you to have enlightenment by your own experience. Therefore, we agreed to be bound, but you have no power to bind us. You understand? That actually sadhus are bound by love and affection of true disciples. They can never be bound by any ordinary means materially, not by money, not by prestige, not by any other thing except pure dedication of any sevak. So then Ratnakar told, I would like to become such a sevak because I realize now that all of these sins I've accumulated over these many years, they will be a big burden to me. And even now, hmm, even this very minute that I've asked my family to take even a percentage of those sins, they've all disagreed. So what is the real meaning of family? Family only means, oh, you provide for me, I satisfy you. So it is just like business. There is no real love. In the material world, there's no real love. 
is only a contractual arrangement. I scratch your back, you scratch my back. So Ratnakar was having all of these realizations. He said, so how will I obtain? How will I obtain true realization? I have the impetus to do it now. The spark is there, but how will it become the flame of actual self-realization? They said, listen, there's one method that you can do, which will give you full blown self-realization. It is very easy to do because you're coming from hunter community. You may not be able to chant so many mantras. You may not be able to do so many pujas. You may not be able to worship any archavigraha. You may not be able to perform any homa, yagya, anything, but you can chant the name of God. And the best name for you to chant is the name Ram. So two things are proven here. One is that Valmiki and Ram were contemporary because Ram was already born at that time. Describe he was one years old at that time. He was already born. So Saptarishis knew about Ram and Valmiki was also living at that time. At the time Valmiki will take up his austerities, he's about 40 years old. So now the Saptarishis say, listen, sit and chant the name of Ram with great concentration. Ram, uh, Ratnakar told, listen, if I had the power to concentrate, I probably would have never found myself in this condition in the first place. I have no ability to concentrate. My mind was always spinning in samsara. It means I'm always thinking how to get money, how to take care of family, how to get more money. What kind of thievery will I do today? Will I get caught today? Will I face danger today? My mind is always full of these things. I have no ability to concentrate my mind. What to speak? You're asking me to say the name Ram, but I find when I try to bring Ram to my tongue, I can't even say it. So the Saptarishi told, listen, we want you to do two things. One, throughout your history, you've killed many people and you've killed many animals. This is Mara. Mara means death. So you've become very familiar with death. So we want you to recite Mara because it will be easy for you. Secondly, there is a tree hmm? in that part of India. It is also called Mara tree. You understand? It doesn't mean death. It's just a tree. It's called Mara. Sit here. Stare at the tree in order to focus so you don't divert your eyes and attention to anything else. And repeat so your ears will hear it. Mara, 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 Rama, Rama. That Mara will turn to Ram. So it's mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam. Sankhyata parihasam va, stobam helanam va, vaikunta nama secha agam haram vidu. Even if you will chant the name of Bhagavan with the letters reversed, or by indicating something else, or jokingly, or neglectfully, still, Vaikuntha Nama Asesha Aga Haram Vidu, it will remove all sins. So he began to sit and recite, Mara, 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 eventually turned to Rama, 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 Rama. But he became so absorbed in the Nam, he lost any consciousness of his external existence. And at that time, his body was so still, it was like being petrified. So at that time, ants begin to make a hill on the body of the uh, on the body of Ratnakar. And a hill in Sanskrit, anthill is called Valmikam. That's the name in Sanskrit of an anthill. So when he's mm, chanting it come to such a point, Lord Brahma descended. And Lord Brahma, seeing the condition of his absorption in Nam, he took some water from his Kamandalu and he sprinkled it on that anthill and all of the anthill dissolved away and he saw a resplendent, brilliantly shining sage there who was Ratnakar, who was filled with sinful light, whose body reflected that image, was now glistening and shining because of the purity which he had attained by chanting the name of Ram. So now he came to consciousness and he saw before him Chaturmukhi Brahma. And he thought, oh, have I gone to Swarga? Have I obtained Siddhi? So then Brahma told, no, not that you've obtained Siddhi, but fully you've become realized, but you have some purpose here. So, so now, because you were born, 
from this Valmikam, you're no longer Ratnaka. You should not associate yourself with your past. You are reborn now. You're reborn from Mother Earth because in the Puranas it's mentioned that the anthills, Valmikam, they're considered to be the ears of Bhumi Devi. So you should consider that your birth is from Bhumi Devi. This is going to be important later on, right? I'll make the connection later on. You should consider you are born from Bhumi Devi. So your name is Valmiki. So now Valmiki's life had become completely different. He began to live in the forest and he had his own ashram. And seeing the qualities, right? Everyone remembered, even from a long time ago, Harit has become a very great sage now named Valmiki. So many disciples came to him. One prominent disciple's name was Bhaladwaj. So, so Bhaladwaj was like a right-hand person to Valmiki. He would serve him in so many ways. So one day, Valmiki and Bhaladwaj had gone out in order to mm, collect some water from the river. <clears throat> and when Valmiki entered into that part of the forest, the beauty of where his ashram was, was so enchanting, he became overwhelmed. And he began to look around at the environment. And he saw that the river was running very sweetly and it was making a very beautiful sound. He heard many kinds of birds and he remembered it was because of imitating these birds that my life took the course it did. But now I'm hearing these birds and it sounds like they're all chanting Vedic hymns. And therefore, I'm very inspired hearing all of these different sounds of this forest. And then he looked and he saw two Karuntra birds. Karuntra birds are very special. They're a type of bird who the male bird and the female bird are like inextricable. They're never apart. When they bind together, they stay together always. It said that even at nighttime, <clears throat> excuse me, when they sleep, their beaks become intertwined and they sleep like that. So he looked up and he saw these two Karuntra birds and he noticed that they were in the status of mating. And just as he was observing the entire environment, a sound pierced the air. It was the sound of an arrow, but it was so powerful that it made a sound. So immediately before he could think of anything, the arrow traveled at such speed it struck the male Karuntra bird. And immediately that Karuntra bird fell from the tree and fell into the water just below it. Immediately, the piteous cries of the female Karuntra bird were overwhelming. The entire environment around the ashram had completely changed. <clears throat> Valmiki looked and he saw one hunter there. And he immediately, <clears throat> in part sorrow and part anger, he said, Ma Nishara Pratishtam, Twagamaha, oh, hmm, Shashwadi Samaha, Karuntra Maitunari Ekam, Avari Kama Mohitam. He recited this verse, it had 32 syllables. These 32 syllables are in a chandas, it's in a meter called Anustup. So it says that this was the first time this Anustup chandan, Anustup meter was recited. So we recited in Bhagavad Gita also. Etc. So he recited like that. So immediately, <clears throat> man nisada, the word man in Sanskrit means stop. Oh, hunter, halt your action. Stop right away. Nishada means hunter. Mm. What you've done, pratishtam, agama, shashridi, samaha, it will follow you as an infamous act throughout the rest of your life. You will never become free from the implications of the sin of what you've thus done. This Karuntra bird, they were Kama Maitunadi Avara Kama Mohitam. While they were absorbed in their mating, overcome by natural passion, you shot and killed this Karuntra bird. Oh, what thing you've done, Hunter. May you forever be infamous for this activity. And then Valmiki with Bhadaraj, he left and went back to his ashram. As he was back in his ashram, another amazing thing happened. He thought, listen, I may have been a little bit impetuous. As soon as I saw that this hunter killed the Karuntra bird, immediately from my heart came these feelings. 
it caused me to have a great deal of sorrow. Sorrow is called mm, soka. Soka means like unhappiness. Like Sita, when she was kidnapped, she was kept in what's called the asok barn. So asok trees are a tree under which Sita was placed so that no unhappiness would come to her, even though she was separated from Ram. So asok means no happiness. Sok means unhappiness. So this soka, this, this unhappiness, manifested this verse from the mouth of Almiki. So it's described that this soka created a shloka, which was the shloka that he recited. Now, simultaneously, remember I told that Ram had already made his appearance. So now, Valmiki had performed austerities for a number of years. And now, hmm, hmm, Sri Ram, hmm, this is after his realization, everything, Valmiki. Ram, when he married Sita, he was 12 years old. Sita was six, right? Because in Vedic culture, sometimes marriages are arranged at that age, right? When Ram returned to Ayodhya, they lived very happily in Ioja for 12 years, Ram and Sita together, along with Lakshman and Irmala, all of their maid servants, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, Dasarat by that time, he had 350 wives, uh, three of whom were prominent, Kosalia, Sumitra, and Kaike. You understand? So he married 350 wives. So some people ask why. So it's described at that time, uh, Parashuram who's a Shaktivesh avatar of the Lord, he had made a vow because of the killing of his family that he would destroy the, the Kshatriya dynasty 21 generations. He made one exception. Any Kshatriya king who was celebrating the first year of their marriage, he would give them a pass. So Dasarat married 350 different queens. So every time Parashuram came around, it would be the first year of his marriage. <laughs> You understand? So now, Ram had lived for 12 years very peacefully after marrying Sita there. So Ram was 24 at that time. And his 24th year, at that time, once when Dasarat Maharaj had gone in the morning for grooming himself, while he was grooming himself, he saw one gray hair. And he thought this gray hair is the messenger of the Kal Purush, means the messenger of time personified. That how much longer I will be on the planet, I don't know. But it means that I should take the action now at this time in order to make Ram the heir apparent to the throne. So it was at this time that then Kaikei, who had had two boons from Dasarat. Dasarat got the name Dasarat because Indra, Whenever sometimes they would be attacked by demons, Indra would call on great warriors from the earth to come and fight the battle. Some say that Indra's real expertise is just in enjoying. He likes movies, drama, plays, dancing. But when it comes to fighting, it's like, I'd rather not. You understand? <laughs> so he would invite kings to come to Swaga to fight on his behalf. And Dasarat was so expert at fighting on a chariot called a Rav that he could fight in 10 different directions simultaneously. So Dasarat became his name. It was like a title that was given to him. So Dasarat one time when he was fighting like that, he was fighting so valiantly, but one of the wheels on his chariot came loose. At that time, Kaikei was present with him because sometimes we talk about the material world having a woman who is, I don't want to use any crazy language, but ride or die, right? Somebody who will be with you through thick and thin, right? So Chatriya ladies were like that. Like when Krishna went to fight Banasur, Satyabhama went with him. You understand? There's some other meanings there, but Satyabhama went with him. So Kaikei was on the chariot with Dasarat. And when his chariot broke and Dasarat was having a hard time coordinating, fighting, managing the chariot, uh, Kai K herself took her finger, put it in the spoke of the wheel of the chariot so the chariot would function properly. And in this way, she removed Dasarat from imminent danger. Dasarat promised her two boons for the valiant behavior that she performed. So when he made Ram the heir apparent, Bart 
and shot Rugen. Bart is the daughter of mm, Kai K. Mm? Lakshman and Shatrugan are the daughter, I mean, excuse me, the son, sons, excuse me, son of Kaike and the sons of Sumitra are Lakshman and Shatrugan. So once Bart and Shatrugan had gone to the grandfather, uh, means Kaike's father, and while they were away, then Dasara thought this is the opportune time to do the coronation ceremony to make Ram the heir apparent. You understand? So it was at that time that Kai K came to him after being influenced by Mantara. Mantara was a nursemaid of Kai K, but because Kai K's mother died when she was young, then Mantara was like a mother to her, not only like a nursemaid and like a aide de camp, but she used to do everything for Kai K. She raised Kai K, so she was very dear to Kai K, and Kai K would always listen to her. But when Ram was going to be coronated as king, at that time, Mantra came to Kaike and told him the sin. Do you know what's happening? In the absence of your son, Lord Dasarat has decided to do the coronation of Ram. Do you know what that means for you? Kosalya will become his favorite queen. Sumitra will be even more important to you than you. And you will be at the bottom of the barrel because Dasarat will always have to give favor to Ram, and therefore he cannot give favor to your son. So Kaike told to Mantara, listen, why are you speaking like that? Ram, Lakshman, Bharat, and Shadrugan, they don't even know whose mother is who. They don't have any distinction. This is my mother, this is your mother. Don't you remember Mantara? When they were very small babies and they were put into the chamber where the nurses could watch them. They would cry incessantly over and over again. They would not stop crying. So the nursemaids came and they were asking advice from the mothers. What should we do? We can't stop them from crying. So then the mother said, listen, why don't you take the cradle where Ram is and put it a little bit at a distance from the cradle of Lakshman, Bart and Shadrugan. Everybody will have their own space. So when they did that, the crying became louder. <laughs> so I said, okay, now take all of the different cribs and bring them very close together. So when they brought the cribs close together, they still continue crying. So then Sumitra, Sumitra is very intelligent, right? We hear about Kaike and Kosalya very much in Ramayan, but Sumitra was very highly qualified and very, very, Sumitra means like who's also a good friend to all. So she was the perfect co-wife because she was so close to the others. She made them always feel at home. She gave the suggestion, listen, take my two sons and take Lakshman and put them in the same cradle with Ram. Take Shatrugan and put them in the same cradle with Bharat. And immediately when they did that, then they stopped crying. So everyone was amazed. They said, how did you figure this out? How did you do? She said, oh, it is just the mother's instinct. So then Vaishishtarishi, he said, ah, she's saying it's a mother's instinct, but this woman is very highly dharmic and very highly realized. What did she realize? My two sons, if I will put them in the proper dharmic position, everything will be peaceful. What is the proper dharmic position? One should always consider themselves a servant of Bhagavan, and even more, one can consider themselves a servant of Bhagavan's devotee. So she took Lakshman and made him the servant of Bhagavan Sri Ram, and she made Shatrugan the servant of Bart, who considered himself a servant of Ram. You understand? So Vaishishna brought out this truth about this. But anyway, she was telling to Mantar, why are you considering that Ram and Bart Shatrugan, they are all seeing differently. If Ram will become the king, I will also be very happy. So Mantara then began to give her a whole series of arguments and Kai K would not accept even one of them. Then suddenly Mantara almost giving up, she turned to walk out the door. And while she was walking out the door, she turned, she said, yes, I know you don't think about anything in relation to yourself, but think about your father. Your father loved you so much 
When your mother passed away, your father made sure that you had everything. Your father spoiled you in such a way with that love. But now when Ram becomes king, do you think he wants to have anybody who will compete with him? He will organize his army, attack your father, make your father subordinate to the kingdom of Ioja. That is the thing that caught Kaike's attention. She said, oh, Montana, do you really think that Ram is capable of that? She said, what does any king will do? What has Dasarat done? Dasarat has not made other kings subservient to him. This is Kshatriya Dharma. Certainly he must do it. So then Kaikei, she said, well, what can I do? What should I do? She said, listen, don't you remember that Dasarat Maharaj owes you two boons? Take these two boons and go to him and request they should immediately be given. And those two boons should include banish Ram to the forest for 14 years and make Bharat the king. So Kaikei, she went to a place called the Kok Bhavan. Nowadays, we don't have enough room in our houses or apartments to have a separate room when the wife becomes angry. So you just have to tolerate. You understand? At that time, any king had a separate room called Kok Bhavan. So the wife could go into a separate room and that way she could display all of her anger and the king, at a certain point, he could come to Kok Bhavan and it would not create atmosphere in the entire castle. So when the messenger and, and, and aides the camp, the ministers of Daswa came, oh, Kaikei, uh, Rani, she's gone to, Rani means queen, she's gone to the Kok Bhavan. So Daswa Maharaj thought, why would she be unhappy? This is a very celebratory time. All arrangements are being made for Ram's coronation. Ram is like her own son. In fact, in the Kamban Ramayan, means the Ramayan in South India, my Guru Dave told one time, one pastime from there, how did it even come about that Kaike would think about using these two boons? Actually, it wasn't just from Mantara. Actually, when Ram was a very small boy, maybe two years old, two and a half years old, he once was on a picnic with Mother Kaike. And Mother Kaike was playing with him and you know, just rubbing his cheeks and showing him so much affection. And Ram's face suddenly became very grave. And he said, listen, Mata, because he used to call all Mata, he said, Mata, listen, please promise me that you will do two things for me. And then immediately Kaike said, whatever it is, what do you want? Do you want any sweet? Do you want any special preparation? She said, no, Mata, I want you to promise me two boons. First, tell me you will promise me. She said, of course I will promise you. If you want, then I should bring Chandra Dev for you to play with. I will do it. Chandra Dev means the moon. So he said, no, I want that when I will become of age to become the Yuvaraj, means the king in waiting, that you will ask for me to be banished to the forest and that your own son will be king. So Kai Kei, she was so confused. First of all, he's only two and a half, three years old. What is he talking about? So she said, listen, you're being around your father and you're hearing all of these royal kinds of dealings. Don't think about anything like that. Tell me what you want. I will give you anything. He said, no, Mata. Very seriously, no, Mata. Please, you promise me only these two boons. She said, listen, you are two and a half years old. What will happen when you are 14, 15? Who knows what will happen at that time? What to speak of when you're of age to become Yuvraj? Don't think of any of these things now. Only think of playing. You're living in such royal opulence. Anything that you want can be had. He said, if you love me, he used this word, if you love me, you will promise me these two boons. Kaike had no understanding what this would mean in the future. She said, I love you so much. Whatever you want, Tatashtu, I grant you that boon. So this became the underlying reason why Mantara was able to be effective. And now Dasarat had to come to Kokpavan. And speaking to Kaike there, Kaike told, listen, old Dharmaraj, because one name of Dasarat was also Dharmaraj, because he always followed Dharma. But why is she addressing him as Dharmaraj now? Because she wants to remind him that what I'm about to tell you is to follow two promises that you made. And one, one mm, quality or characteristics of anyone who's 
very dharmic, very religious, is that they never break their word. They're called satchavan. Satchavan means, or satchavha, means one who speaks always the truth. Satchavacha. They never break their word. So she said, oh, Dhamraj, listen. At that time when you were fighting the great battle, and out of my love and affection for you, I saved your life. You promised me two boons. So Dasarat said, yes. What is there need to come to Kopavan to get two boons for? You could have requested me at any time in any place. I will grant you anything you want. You name it. Tell me what it is. Right away, I'll have my ministers take care of it. Even if you ask me personally, I will myself go and get it. She said, listen, I want that you should make my son Bharat the king. Dasarat's whole complexion changed. His whole demeanor changed. His arms fell to his side. He said, listen, why would you not? You love Ram so much. Everybody in the kingdom loves Ram. They have no less love for your son, but Ram is the elder. Ram is first son. All of the kingdom, they love Ram. Why would you do like this? She said, and you should banish Ram to the forest for 14 years. Dasarat, he opened his mouth to reply, but nothing came out and he fainted. So then Kaikei, she became extremely angry. She said, oh, just look. That person who was so valiant, so viryavan, means so strong and powerful, they could fight even demons in heaven. At the request to follow through with a promise made to his own wife, he's so weak, he faints. So then she began to use abusive language. What kind of king are you? What kind of dhamaraj are you? So then Dasarat awakened slightly. And he began to try to plead to Kaikei, why, why, for what reason do we need to banish Ram? Even if we make Bart the king, Ram will serve him. This is Ram's nature. Why should he be banished? He said, no, these are my requests. They are non-negotiable. She then said, will you fulfill them or not? And Dasarat, he kept stumbling and, and, and stuttering. And he was kaike, kaike. She said, I need to hear you say yes or no. If you will say no, then we can know for sure you are not Dhammaraj. You are not in the line of Ishwaku, Mandata, and other great kings of the dynasty of the Surya monks. So I will know my father was cheated when you came as a representative of the Surya Vanks and asked for my hand in marriage. Tell me truthfully, O king, can you keep your word? Dasarat, very low voice, so be it. At that time, when he said so be it, his own life came out in his words. So everything he had, it came out in those words. So be it. So then Kai Kei, she stormed from that room. Dasarat could not compose himself. He was devastated. So he came to his ministers like my sister and others. And he asked, what should I do? What can I do? Lord Ram is my life. Ram is my son, but he's my life. So Vaishishta told, listen, though Kaike has spoken in such a cruel way, she's also spoken Dharma. What can we do? I'm the guru of this dynasty. If I will tell what is our Dharmic, uh, it would be a fault on me. At the same time, if I will tell the truth, my heart will also break. But he told, we have to follow Dharma. So then they arranged. At this time, Ram now was 24, going to be 25 years of age. So he pronounced that Ram should be banished to the forest. At that time, 
Ram came and he asked his father, oh, father, because he had not heard yet. Everyone else in the kingdom had heard. And even Kosalia, his mother, was devastated. Sumitra was devastated. Kaikei could not look in the face of Ram. He went to his father and said, father, the atmosphere of the kingdom has become so distraught. Oh, king, has there been any adharma? Has there been any challenge to your kingdom? Is your health okay? When Dasarat looked at Lord Ram, profuse tears came from his eyes. His hair was disheveled. He could not compose himself. And he could only say, Ram, Ram, Ram. So he embraced Ram. And when he embraced Ram, Vaishishta came. And it was Vaishishta who had to coach Dasara to tell the truth to Ram of what was decided. When they told Ram, what did Ram do? Yes, father. This is Dharma. If you've made a promise, I, your son Ram, will fulfill that promise to the very nth degree. I will immediately go and begin to pack. I'm only making the request that Sita, because she's the tender daughter of Janak Maharaj, whom I bought here under the auspices that I would always offer her as a husband protection. But in my absence, I will ask that the kingdom of Ayodhya, yourself and all, Vaishishta and all, they will become protectors of my dear wife Sita. So Ram went. And when Ram was going, Lakshman had heard the news and he ran to Ram and he told, listen, if you will leave, we were in the cradle together. I am one body with you. I will also go to the forest. So then Ram told, listen, this banishment is not for you, Lakshman. They've not asked you to go. They've only asked for me to go. I will go alone and fulfill the Dharma of our father. I'll ask you to stay and along with Bart, Shatrugan and others to stay and protect our father. He's in very critical condition and also to protect this kingdom of Ayodhya. Lakshman told there's no way you can go without me. If you will go, how will I protect anything? If my own condition is so weak because the other half of my existence is gone, I will have no strength. My strength is because I'm tied to you in a bond that was there from the beginning of our childhood. So by this argument, Ram could not refuse Nito Lakshman. Okay, you can come with me. Come with me now. We will have to break this news to Sita. I don't know if I will get through everything. I'm praying that I will get through most of it. So Lakshman and Ram, they went to the chambers of Sita and Sita opened the door and very seldom she would see Lakshman with Ram at her private quarters. So immediately when the door opened, Lakshman bowed his head because he would never look directly at the wife of his elder brother. So he bowed his head and Sita looked at both and she was still in a very joyous mood. She had not heard this news. So she told, Listen, Ram, why have you come here just now? You should be busy in getting prepared for your coronation. I've also been very busy speaking to all of my maidservants who came with me from Janakpur, who came with me from Matila, from Janakpuri. And I was telling them all about our newfound fortune. My husband will be the heir apparent. I will be the queen in waiting. We're having such good conversations, good talks. So then she looked on the face of her husband. Any wife who's truly Dharma Patni, they don't need to hear like any true disciple. They can look at the face of Guru and they can have indication, mood, everything. So any sincere wife, she's like very deeply connected with her husband. She could look at the face of her husband and read so many things. So when she looked closely at the face of Ram, Immediately, all of the feelings which were in the heart of Ram, but being kept very deeply concealed because he was absorbed in following Dharma. Immediately, she extracted those feelings from his heart and they came to her. She burst into tears and she asked, oh, my Lord, you please tell me, please tell me now what misfortune has come upon our dynasty. 
What misfortune has come upon Mother Kosalia, Kaike, Sumitra, our, our king, Dasarat? What has come upon yourself? So that time, Ram told, listen, in order to keep the glory of this dynasty, the Surya Vams, we are all the embodiment of Dharma. My father made two promises to Kai K, and Kai K asked for the fulfillment of those two promises. But I beg you, Sita, do not have any ill will towards Kai K. What she did, she did in the interest of love of her father. You understand? Please don't hold any ill will. Kai K is really a hero in Ramayana. If it was not for Kai K, you understand? This pastime of Ram going to the forest would never have taken place. So she accepted one of the most difficult services in the entire Ramayana. When Bart and Shatrugan returned to the kingdom and found out what happened, Bart first went to Mantara and literally beat Mantara. He then went to the chamber of his mother and he opened the door and he said, Oh, daughter of King Kekai, from this day forward, I will never ever address you by the word mother again. You understand how painful <laughs> this must have been? You understand? So Ram told the Sita, please do not hold any ill will towards Kai K. She said, no, I have no time to have any other feelings. I must quickly prepare. When do we have to leave? So then Lakshman, he turned his head towards Ram. And Ram told the Sita, oh Sita, I will be banished to the forest. There are many unknown dangers in this forest. When I came to marry you many years ago with Vishramita, do you know at that time I had to kill the demon Taraka, Subahu, and I shot one arrow and banished that Marichi very far away. I had to kill so many demons who were attacking the sages. There were many ferocious animals. There is no comfortable bed. There is no shade from the sun. There is no shelter from the rain. She told, listen, everything you described is not more dangerous than the absence of my husband from my side. Shelter can be made to protect us from rain. Your arms are very powerful. You can protect us from wild animals and even the greatest of demons. At 12 years old, you kill the great demoness Tarka. I'm not fearing any of these things. But if you are gone to the forest and I remain here, who will kill the demon of loneliness for me? Who will kill the demon of the absence of service to my husband? Who will kill the demon of my constant thoughts about you, which I will never be able to remove? Can you kill those demons from being banished in the forest? I don't need a comfortable bed. I do not need the comforts of royal life. What I need is the love and affection and savor of that person whom I married many, many years ago in Matila, when he lifted up the bow that no other king could lift. I need to be by the side of that husband. This is called Dharma Patya. She then quoted a series of women who were Dharma Patyas. She said, do you think I'm less than any of these women? Ram was dumbfounded. Though Ram was very, very sastric, he could not offer any argument. Lakshman told, listen, I'm making a vow. I will not eat or sleep. I will dedicate these 14 years to the service and protection of you and Sita. Ram said, so be it. On that very day, Lakshman, Sita, and Ram, they left to go to the forest. I have no time to discuss the many pastimes that they experienced in the forest. I'm only telling one thing because it is pertinent to the context of al -Qatar. During the course of that time, they spent many, many days in very beautiful places in the forest. You understand? In one place, however, they were approached by one Rakshashi. She was the sister of Ravan. Her name was Suopanakar. At that time, Suopanakar 
She had heard about the beauty of Rome, but she had never seen it. But on this day, while she was wondering, she had her brothers, Dusasan, Kara, and others, were staying not so far away in Janastan. But she was wandering around looking to find any enticing meal. This is what Rakshashis do. When she saw the beauty of Lord Ram, she thought, oh, my prayer is answered. I don't have a husband yet. And certainly I want to have this person as my husband. My brother is Ravan, Gumbakarna. I'm related to all of these great warriors. Certainly they will facilitate that I will have this person as my husband. But he may not like me in this particular form. So I will change my form. So she changed the form into that of a very beautiful woman. So really there's some upakyan here as well. That we are all trying to practice dharma. And one of the features of maya is that maya can take on any kind of form. So maya takes on the form of many kinds of beautiful attractions in this world. To try to, attra uh, try to attract us away from the Ekpatni Vratta. Ekpatni Vratta was the vow of Lord Ram that though his father married 350 queens, he would only marry one woman, that was Sita. You understand? So we all have an ekantic vrat, means a mood of one-pointedness. We will obtain service to Krishna in this lifetime. But Maya, like a rakshashi, she makes many different appearances in order to try to attract us away from that. But when you are practicing very sincerely, the covering of Maya comes off and you can see the truth. And this is how you avoid Maya. So in the same way, when Shopanakar came before Ram, she glorified the beauty of Lord Ram. She used all of her female charm. And she said, listen, there's no way that I can leave without accepting you, such a hero as my husband. Ram told, listen, I've taken a special vow in this life. At Patni Bratta, I can only marry one woman. And this woman has even accompanied me to the forest. But my younger brother, he's not taken such a vow. Though Lakshman is married to Urmala, he's not taken a vow that he would only marry one woman. He is as strong, as handsome, as beautiful, and even younger than I am. Oh, woman, take this glorious hero as your husband. So Lakshman looked at Ram with a very sour face. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you trying to arrange here? So then Lakshman said, listen, how can I, who am the junior brother and the mm, lesser hero than my own brother, do you know that he was the heir apparent? I would only be a servant to such a king. You deserve the best. You should marry him only. And in this way, they went back and forth. So then Shupanakar, her patience ran out and she became angry. Anger is what reveals the real person, right? You could meet somebody and they could be super handsome. They can be super beautiful. But the first time you have an argument and you see the real side, oh, that's when you say, oh man, did I make a mistake? <laughs> you understand? Because the nature of anger is that it reveals the real person. So when Supanakar became angry, her Rakshashi form came out. And she said, both of you are playing tricks with me. The real cause of the problem here is only this woman. But that will be a problem no longer. And she began to attack Sita. And immediately, Lakshman, on the order of Ram, jumped in. But, Kshatriya Dharma, you should not kill a woman. Just like when Ram had to kill Taraka. That was the first demoness he killed. And he told Vishwamitra Muni, how can I, as a Dharmic Kshatriya, the first person I kill will be a woman. And Vishwamitra Muni told him, listen, is this really a woman? What is the nature of a woman? And so then he began to describe all the qualities of true womanhood. He said, now look at this demoness. Is that a woman or is it a demoness? Don't hesitate any longer. That's when Ram killed Taraka. You understand? So in the same way, Lakshman understanding that lesson Right, because he was with Ram when Vishwamitra gave this instruction. He immediately jumped in, but still he had some reluctance to kill her. So he simply disfigured her by chopping off her nose. Immediately, Shupanakar, she ran back to Ravan and told Ravan. She said, listen, brother, what has happened to me? Just see my face. Now, of course, Rakshashi forms are not very beautiful anyway. So really, just to have your nose chopped off 
really, frankly speaking, not a big deal. But <laughs> everybody thinks their conception of beauty is supreme. So no matter what you look like, you get your mirror in the morning and go, yeah, very Denzelish. I must say so myself. You understand? <laughs> everybody thinks like that. So anyway, Ram said, listen, <laughs> what is the big deal of this? You want me to go out and kill some human being? Use my force to kill some human being because you ran into some difficulty. Your relatives, God and Dushan, 14,000 powerful Rakshasas, are there my in Janistan? Go and tell them, they'll handle this. He said, but I came to tell you, brother. The reason I came to tell you is because I was not only thinking of myself. What I saw there is amazing. And she described the beauty of Sita. Soon as she described the beauty of Sita, all of the lust in the heart of Ravana rose just like the sun arises in the day. And immediately he thought, oh, when your brothers go and they kill this ordinary mortal, bring that beauty to me. So then she immediately went to those 14,000 Rakshashas. She told, on the order of your leader, Ravan, he's ordered you to go and to kill this impudent prince of Dasara and his brother and to bring that beauty, which is accompanying them back to him. So the 14,000 Rakshashas, they attack Lord Ram. I have to speed up because we cannot go all day and I have many major parts to tell. So immediately, Lakshman and Ram, they kill 13,999 of those 14,000 Rakshashas. One of those Rakshashas witnessing all of that in cowardice, he ran away. Witnessing that activity, Shwapanakar ran back to Ravan to tell Ravan. But now let us go back for a second to Valmiki. In the course of their travel, Ram and Sita, they came to the ashram of Valmiki. And they stayed there very wonderfully for a period of time and received the hospitality of Valmiki. So now when Ram and Sita after their banishment, so now we're jumping a little bit, after their 14 year banishment and they returned to Ayodhya, then on the request of Aishishkarishi, he said, listen, many of the Ayodhya Vashis, they were not able to see your pastime for 14 years. Call all of the artisans, call all of the sculptors and allow them to make a special museum which will be the housing of paintings and bas reliefs and carvings of all of your activities during your 14 years of exile. So Ram said, so be it. He called the best of artists, the best of ministers. In a very short order of time, they built a wonderful building. It was magnificently constructed. And there, there were many paintings, bas reliefs, sculptures, waterfalls, things that imitated the places like Chitrakut, where Ram and Sita visited many beautiful places. So on the day that it was opening, those artisans and ministers, they told Ram, oh, Sita, Ram, Lakshman, please come and see. Bar, Charu, come and see the beauty of this museum. So Ram and Sita, they were going from one painting to another. They finally came to a painting of the ashram of Valmiki. And around the painting, there were carvings, waterfalls, different things. And Sita at that time was approximately 35 years old. So now, after they had returned to Ayodhya, after the 14 years, within those two years, she became pregnant with love and Kush. You understand? They were in her womb. So when she came to the painting of the Ashram of Almiki, the remembrance of the time they spent there inspired her. So she spoke to Ram and said, listen, this kingdom of Ayodhya is very wonderful, but it is like a city. And there's so many city dynamics here. So many soldiers, warriors, so many different ministers, so many different royal affairs. Do you remember how peaceful the ashram of Valmiki was? Would it not be wonderful that when I give birth, my sons would be able to be raised in an environment like that? So this is one thing. So by Shishtarishi, she, he then sent a message uh, to Lord Ram. The messenger came in and said, Oh, good day, Rani, meaning to, to Sita. Oh, good day, Lakshman. Good day, uh, King Ram. 
Oh, Ram, I have a message from you from Gurudev. See, Vaishishtarishi. So Ram took that message in private. He said, listen, Vaishishtarishi has told, whatever Sita Devi utters, you should promise her on this day that you will fulfill that promise. He's looked at all of the ast uh, astro astrological configurations. This is a most auspicious day to grant any boon for any desire of Sita Devi. At the same time, another minister came in and he told to Ram after greeting all of the royal family, oh, uh, king, may I have a word? So that messenger or minister then told to Ram, listen, while I was wandering in the kingdom and listening to the sort of mood of the residents of the kingdom, I came across one washerman. He was in a very heated argument with his wife. His wife had gone out <clears throat> and had gone to her father's home and it stayed out overnight and then came back. So the husband was saying, Listen, do you think I'm like Ram? You can leave my home, stay away from my home overnight, then return. You can say you went to the house of your father, but still you should never spend the night away from my home because apparently the wife did not tell. Maybe it got dark and she could not return. So in this way, the minister went back and said, listen, if this Dobiwala, this washerman is having such feelings, Suppose this idea gets to others. So then Ram thought, yes, it's my duty to protect the Dharma of this family. But I cannot ask Sita to again perform the Agni Pariksha, means to be examined by fire. When I was in Lanka, I asked her and she proved her chastity. But I cannot ask her to do that here. Moreover, that Dobiwal and others could never ask such a thing. So then Ram came to Lakshman and he said, Lakshman, tomorrow, I want you to take Sita, take her very near the ashram of Valriki Rishi and then leave her there and return to Ayodhya. So then Lakshman said, listen, brother, certainly I will prepare everything. Would you like me to arrange for the cooks to make any picnic preparations, anything? He said, no, no, no. You take some simple fruits, Take her near the ashram of Almiki and then return, leaving her there. So Lakshman couldn't even understand. What are you saying? I should take her, pregnant Sita, leave her in the forest near the ashram of Almiki. Brother, certainly she made a statement that she likes that atmosphere, but she certainly would not want to be away from you. He said, Lakshman, please follow my orders. I'm giving you this order representing the entire line of the Vansa, uh, Surya Vansa. It is not from my heart. I don't want to ever be separated from Sita, but a king has responsibilities. So Lakshman put his head down and he thought, in never in any other life will I ever come as the younger brother of the Lord. I will always come in a position where I can execute my own opinion because it was so painful for Lakshman. So then the next day he took Sita. Sita was pregnant. He drove near the ashram of Almiki. And Sita, she got close, recognized the area. And she said, oh, stop here. Stop here, brother. I want to get down and pick some fruits. Perhaps we will visit the ashram of Almiki and I can offer some fruits. So she got down and she began to pick fruits. She was surprised that Lakshman did not get down off the chariot. Because normally he would get down and help her to pick fruits to put in a basket. She said, oh, brother, is there something wrong? Are you perhaps remembering the small offense that I made to you while we were in the forest? Because once one golden deer, which was Marichi, which had been arranged by Robin hmm, to kidnap Sita, Sita saw this golden deer and wanted it for her own self. So she sent Ram to get that golden deer. Ram told her this is a demon, it's not a deer. So at that time he told Lakshman to stay behind and protect Sita. But when she heard the calls of Ram, everybody knows this story, she told Lakshman to go and help his brother. Lakshman told, my brother is capable of defeating thousands of demons. You saw yourself how he defeated all those Raksashas when he was a young boy. He's fully competent to protect himself. So then Sita said, listen, 
I think perhaps you don't mind if he's killed because then you can have me for yourself. So this was very painful to Lakshman. So then Sita was thinking, perhaps he's remembering this and now being back in the forest, he's holding it against me. So Lakshman, he didn't even raise his head. She said, oh, please forgive me, my brother. We've had so many years pass since that time. Certainly you must have been able to forgive me. So Lakshman spoke and said, oh, my dear sister, it is not at all anything to do. I, in fact, never took offense. I understood your love for Ram and your desire for his welfare. I am distressed because my brothers told me to leave you here in this forest. So Sita, she didn't weep one tear. She didn't express any anger. She said, listen, Lakshman, you are as dear to me as like a son almost. Don't for one second have any feeling of heart that you somehow or another have done anything wrong. You are the younger brother and you are the servant also of a king. But I'm requesting one thing, please look at me. But Lakshman could not look at Sita. She said, no, I realize that even when we're in the forest, you would never look above my ankles because you are such a chaste brother and you consider me such a chaste wife. But look only at my belly. And when you look at my belly, understand that the sons of your brother are there. So I only want, do not express anger, sorrow, or anything that will disturb him, but only ask one question, because I know he's trying to carry out Dharma. Ask him if he learned this Dharma from any guru like Vashishta, that one should abandon his pregnant wife in the forest. When Lakshman heard that, he broke down into tears and he hit the reins of the chariot and the horses took off. Valmiki Rishi came out because he heard this kind of exchange and he took Sita back to his ashram and he was completely bewildered. Now, the question could come, Valmiki Rishi is a very great saint and here is a pregnant woman. How can you keep any woman in your ashram of all brahmacharis and so forth, so on, right? But Valmiki actually had a section where there were some ladies, but still, this is the pregnant wife of someone else. How can you keep them in your ashram? Remember I told that Valmiki was born from Bhumi Devi, right? He was born from the Valmikam. These are the ears of Bhumi Devi, according to Puranas. So he's called Valmiki because he's the son born from the Valmikam or the ears of Mother Earth. Sita also means that daughter who was born from Bhumi Devi. So Valmiki and Sita are like brother and sister. So dharmically, there's no problem that Sita could stay in the ashram of Valmiki. So now Valmiki, he arranged for the care of mother Sita and he arranged for other ladies to help her because she was pregnant. He arranged every day that different fruits and vegetables would be given to her and that the uh, other ladies there could serve her. But he was so curious. Wow, I thought Ram was like the perfect person. How is it possible he could have banished this lady to the forest? When he was thinking like that, he remembered the person who can answer all kinds of questions. Here begins the very first verse of Almiki's Ramayana. He says, Tapasvi Shwadaya Nirantaram Tapasi Vagvaram Vagvita Vadvidambaram Nara Paripa Pracha Valmiki Punivungavam. He recites this verse. That person who is Tapasvi means who's realized what is the true meaning of Tapasya. What is the true meaning of Tapasya? It means Saranagati or the entrance into Bhakti. This is the real meaning of the word Tapa. I can't go into detail here because already we're very late, right? So he's addressing Narada. Tapasvi swadhyaya nirantaram. That person who's always immersed in the study of bhakti and who tapasvi vagvidam varam, who's always speaking the knowledge of bhakti to everyone. Narada, 
that person is the most fit person paripapracha to ask questions about Lord Ram and to clear my doubts. Valmiki puni ah muni pungamam. Myself Valmiki, I will ask my questions to this great Rishi. At that time, Nada Muni appeared there, and he asked, "Oh Nada, listen, tell me, kon ashmin sampratam loke gunavam viryavam damagya kritagya satyavratta um." Mm. Jiravrata Charitra mm. Charitra mm. Savabhuteshu Kohita mm. Vetban Sama Arata mm. Kasha Aika Priyadharshanam mm. Atmakam Jitta Krodo mm. Dyutimana Anusuyaka mm. huh. Kasha Bipyati Devasha Jataruda Sasya hmm, Son Yuge, he named 16 qualities. And in these 16 qualities, he said, Listen, tell me, Gonash means Sampratam. The word Sampratam means, Tell me that person who's living now, not in the future, not in the past, tell me a person who's living now who has the 16 great qualities. What 16 qualities? Gunavam. The word Gunavam means, he has the quality of Soshila. Soshilata means who's very compassionate, who has empathy for others, Soshila. And Viryavan, who's very powerful, very strong, both of mind and body. Dharmagya, who is very dharmic. Kritagya, who's very grateful. Then he also told Satyavakya, who never speaks untrue, and who's Dhritavrata, who always accomplishes what he sets out to do. And as he named those first qualities, then he thought, hmm, even to have these qualities in one person is very extraordinary. Charitra, one whose character is so high class. Go yukta sababute shu, kohita, a person who always thinks about the welfare of others and who feels himself yukta, connected to them. He doesn't feel himself above them. Vidvan, who's very learned. Sama Artha, who's completely accomplished in everything they do. Then, Kasya Aikya Priyadarshanam, that person who is so beautiful, it is unanimous. Right? Even if you have Mr. Universe competition or Miss Universe competition, somebody will say, well, I don't think that person is that beautiful. But in Ram, Every single person who saw Ram thought, Aikya Priyadashanam, this is the sole person whom everybody seeing them thinks he is the most beautiful person in the world. Atmavan, who's completely self-controlled. Jitta Kroda, he's conquered anger. Dutimana, his influence on others is very great. Anasuyaka, he has no envy of anyone. Then, hmm. Kasya Bipyati Devascha, all the Devas, when he becomes angry, even the Devas fear him. Who is the person who has these 16 qualities? My wife is telling me to calm down. <laughs> so who is the person who has these 16 qualities? What person? Even, even Draupadi, in her previous life, when she wanted to get married, she prayed, oh, Lord Shiva, can I have a husband who's all beautiful, learned, Dharmic, powerful, right? So she ended up having to marry five different men to get that accomplished. So now how to find 16 qualities of perfection in one person? So Nada Muni took some time to answer. He knew the answer, but he said, listen, your questions are very good. These questions are very beneficial for you. In fact, these questions are very beneficial for the world. But here is the name of that person whom you're asking for. Ishavaku, Vanksha, Prabhavo, Ramanama, Janai Shrita. That person whom everyone, Jana Shruta, you can hear it from the mouth of everyone, not just me. That person who was the Prabhav means the greatest influence in the dynasty of Ishvaku, meaning the Surya Vanksha. His name is Ram. Immediately when he said that, 
Valmiki took two steps back. What? You're telling me the person who just dropped off his pregnant wife in the forest is the person who has these 16 qualities? I know he stayed with me for some time. I thought him to be very dominant, but you're telling me he has all the 16 qualities of a perfect person. Can we click on Haribo, somebody asked me that. How can we rationalize that this person would do such a thing? So he said, listen, you're thinking Ram is ordinary. You're thinking he's ordinary. So I don't have time to go through all 16 qualities, but I'm telling one thing. He told, listen, he has the quality called Dhritavrakta, means he, anything he sets out to do, he never stops until he fully accomplishes it. Do you remember Valmiki, that once when you were walking in your ashram, you saw one hunter and you saw that hunter kill a Karuntra bird. And when you saw that hunter kill the Karuntra bird, you became very sad and you cursed that hunter. That hunter was himself Lord Ram. That Karuntra bird was the 14,000th of those 13,999 that he killed the one escape was called a company. He took the form of a Karuntra bird with his wife and was hiding incognito. Ram took the form of a hunter to complete the task he did not fulfill. So then Valmiki became even more upset. He said, oh my gosh, so you're telling me now that I cursed Bhagavan. <laughs> because I told, Mani Shara Pratishtam, Tova Agamaha Shashwati Samaha. May you live in infamy, infamy for the rest of your life. So then Nad Muni said, no, you did not curse him. Listen carefully, Valmiki. Ma means goddess Lakshmi. Nishada means the place on the chest of Narayan where Lakshmi resides. So she's called Ma Nishada because she always resides on the chest of Lord Narayan. His fame, Pratishta, will be forever known in the world because you will write the history of his manifestation called Ram. Ram and Sita are like two Karuntra birds. They are inseparable. And when they were separated by the kidnapping of Sita by Ravan, the great epic of Ramayan that you will write will tell the story of their great love and it will forever be famous in the world, not infamous, but famous in the world because you will write it. So actually your curse was actually a glorification of the Lord. So then Lord Brahma appeared there and he said, yes, I will testify that what Nard is telling is the truth because I myself became the tree that those two Karuntra birds were standing on. So now Valmiki said, but listen, I did not see the early pastimes of Ram. I only saw Ram when he visited my ashram. I also don't know what happened after. How will I understand these things? So Brahma gave him a benediction. Prakasham, rahasyam prakasham, karnadrasham. When you look at the palm of your hand, all of the leelas and confidential meanings of those leelas of Ram will appear in your hand just like a TV screen. And you'll be able to write Ramayan. So, so many pastimes in Ramayan to tell is 24,000 verses. At the beginning of each thousandth verse is the Gayatri Mantra. One syllable of Gayatri Mantra is present in the first verse. Then when you get to verse number 1,000, the second syllable, when you get to 2,000, that third syllable and on and on for 24,000 verses, you have 24 letters which make up Gayatri. So while chanting the Ramayana in full, one also chants the Gayatri Mantra, which gives revelation of truly the pastimes of Ram. Shri Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman Ki Jai. Sadhu, 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 sadhu. So though Tuesday is the actual appearance of Ram, we wouldn't have opportunity. So we try to speak something of Ram today. People speak Ramayan Kata for nine days, 11 days. It's impossible to speak in an hour, hour and a half. But we try to cover some very important things, especially the perspective on how the genesis of Ramayan came about. So we may have time for just one or two questions. I have a uh, question. But then mm, we're going to have to end for today. Akundaji, can you hear me?
Yes. Yes, Babuji. And the bots, everyone. My question is, how great is the Mahima of Nam that a person who appeared to be a murderer when he chanted the name backwards and he became such a devotee that he got the benediction to not only write the pastimes of the Lord, but also become the guru of the Lord. How, how great is the name of, of the Lord? Yes, I quoted that verse. Sankyat parihasam va stobam helanam va vaikunta nam asesha agam haram vidu. So asesha agam means unlimited sins of all kinds. Haram vidu means it removes all kinds of sins. Even if it's chanted by indicating something else to give a hint, Sankyat, parihasam, jokingly, uh, stobam, even if the, the, the words are not in the right order, helanam, even if it's neglectful chanting, still it can remove all kinds of sin. And the real secret to, this, to Valmiki's being able to obtain realization was the blessing of Saptarishis and the blessing of Nard, blessings of Brahma. And actually okay. the curse of four Kumaras was a blessing. You understand? Just like when they cursed Jai and Vijay, it was a blessing because Jai and Vijay ultimately become, uh, who is it? Um, in Goa Lila, they become uh, Jagai Madai. Jagai Jagai Madai. Madai. And they receive the highest class of praying. So by Nam, we could say that by chanting Nam, eventually you'll get Sado Sangha and the blessings of the Sados and then enter into Krishna's Lila. Or vice versa. By Bhakti and Mukhi Sukriti, some pious activity perform, you get Sadhu Sangha. Sadhu gives the Nam. And inside that Nam is all the Sadhu's blessing. Mm -hmm. That Nam becomes very fruitful. Without Sadhu's blessing, Nam cannot bear fruit. Jai. Jai. Thank you. Mukunda. Yes. Um, just one thing I wanted to ask you. Um, how wonderful it was that because of Kai K, this all started. And there was a reason why this happened. You never mentioned that. Oh, I did. <clears throat> I told two stories, one from Kamban Ramayan. Guru Dave tells the pastime, and I asked Guru Dave <clears throat> because it's not written in Valmiki Ramayan. So once I asked Guru Dave, the story that you tell that Ram, when he was a small boy, asked Kai K to grant him the two boons of being banished and making Bart the king, it's not written in Valmiki Ramayan. Right. It's not written in Ramcharit Manas. So where is it written? Mm -hmm. So he said, Oh, there are so many versions of Ramayan. It's written in South Indian Ramayan. Then Pujapad Madhav Maharaj told, yes, it's written in Dakshin Ramayan. Dakshin Ramayan, I think, refers to Kamban Ramayan in Tamil. And so that narration is told there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So this is the reasoning why the underlying reasoning is the will of the Lord, why Kai K did this. The external reason is Mantara influenced her that Ram would eventually, under the natural activities of a king eventually want to conquer the kingdom of a father. Right now, they were like allies because of the marriage. Right. But of course, after the death of Dasarat and his son takes over, maybe political intrigue will come in. Mm -hmm. So that became the way that Kai K was convinced. Right. The internal one was just, just as amazing when I found out when Good Dad gave this. Yes. Unbelievable. My wife is asking one question. Oh, I just want to make comment. Yes. Uh, another um, example of Dharma Patni mm -hmm. is um, Lakshman's wife, Ermola, who, yes, for the whole time he never ate with yeah. her, she yeah. ate and slept for him. Yeah, my wife made a very, very good point. That Lakshman, I told you, he took a vow that he would not eat or sleep for those 14 years. He would dedicate himself to protection. But his wife was also a Dharma Patni. Her name was Ermila. She agreed. That not only would she accept the separation of her husband to do this service, but that everything she ate and every time she slept, it would not be for herself, but it would be dedicated to the health of her husband. I think my wife would do the same. She would, if it, she would eat and sleep. The problem is I, I could not stay awake for one day with the speaker 14 years, right? Uh, but she's uh, telling me, she's telling me, yeah, I will eat and sleep for you. Now the question was, would you do like Sita? Would you go with me though to the forest? 
That that becomes the real question. See, now she's saying, because she's heard Ram Kata, oh, yes, yeah, certainly I will go with you. You understand? See, okay, let's see. Okay, any last questions or comments? Um, I wanted yeah. to ask uh, regarding something a little separate. Nowadays, right now, they're also celebrating Navaratri. Shila Gurudev has mentioned that there's no real basis for this. Um, that really it's just, uh, you know, as you said, the nine days speaking Ram Katha until actually Ram Navmi. Mm -hmm. So can you also speak a little bit on um, the, you know, I don't know the, necessarily the origin of speaking the nine days, um, but how that somehow got converted and misconstrued into... I'm not, I'm not sure, but the Navaratri festival itself uh, I think actually originally had something to do with when um, Ram returns to Ayodhya. And there's also a festival at that time. Now, that maybe have been conflated also with, because when Dasara approaches King Romapad and he gets Rishashinga to come to do the uh, Kama Putresti Yagya, right? A putra, putra kamesti yagya, I'm sorry, right? That when there was an idea that the sons would be born, right? And after their birth, that there was a celebration. So I'm not sure which one of those two things became conflated. But I remember when Murari Bapu came when I was preaching in Africa, I asked the question, because we do Bhagavad Kata for seven days, I asked, why is this a nine day Kata? And they mentioned about Navaratri, and they mentioned that the Qatar is done for nine days in celebration of Navaratri as well. But I never understood what was the origin, so forth, so on. This was my guesses. I would not hold it to gospel, but I'm not exactly sure where it originated. But it is a definite thing. And many people use it to speak Ram Kata during that time. Thank you. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Haribo, Prabhuji, I have heard Shila Gurudev has told about, like, I don't know, remember the name of that uh, person, but in Bengal, there was a person, um, like uh, a couple of years, maybe 100 years or like 150 years back, mm -hmm. he started saying about, like, uh, about Devi, uh, like, uh, he, when he, the, the people used to say about Ramayana and all those, he said, uh, no, there is a Devi who uh, like worshipped, uh, we should worship for nine days. And like uh, Ram also used to worship uh, that Devi, uh, like Durga. And that's mm. how it started about this Navratra. There is a name of that person. I don't remember what Shala Gurudev has mm. said about that. But that was mm. how it started in, Bang Bang in Bengal. That uh, people started worshipping Devi because they said, okay, uh, the, like Ram also <coughs> worshipped Devi for these nine days. And this all converted into this uh, Navratra and uh, like people started mm. worshipping Devi on these nine days. Mm. That's what I remember, but I don't mm. remember the name of that uh, like person. Uh, very good, Anurata. So you know, I was telling what Gurudev told, how at least it started in Bengal. Um, sometimes traditions like that won't spread so far and wide, but very well could be that it spread from there and spread into other places where it's where it's done like that. Uh, one last thing also is, of course, for us, the culmination of Ram's Leela is that during the time of Ram and Sita's banishment, you know, they did come to Navadvip Dham and they came to the place called Mamagachi. That's the birthplace of Vrindavan Das Thakur. And in that place in Mamagachi, they were sitting together and Ram was smiling. So then uh, Gurudev told that, that Sita asked, oh my Lord, why are you smiling? You seem to be very enlivened about our visit to this place. Is there anything special here? Then Ram tells that in the future, after my next avatar, the avatar after that, I will come here in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And at that time also, we will be separated. And just as when I wanted to perform a yagya in our Leela, right? Uh, once we return to Ayodhya, of course, he's going to do a Leela where he has to make deities of Lord Sita. So he says, at the same way, in the future, due to great separation, 
out of Neem, a golden deity, not go, but made from Neem, right? A golden deity in color will be made of me. Or was it actually gold? Will be made of me because when I take sannyas, you will also be there as Vishnu Priya. So Sita will become Vishnu Priya. And in the form of Vishnu Priya, she'll suffer great separation from the Lord, just as the Lord suffered great separation when she was taken to Lanka. And in order to console her, he asked her to make a deity. So Gurudev tells this last pastime regarding Mahaprabhu and Sri Ramachandra. All right, I think we're, we've really gone way over time and I don't want to take everyone's day. So I think we'll end here. Anuradha Diti, Anuradha Diti, you can do some kirtan, maybe Ram kirtan. Mm -hmm. Short, very short. Ram Sia Ram Sia Ram Sia Ram Ram Sia Ram Sia Ram Jai Ram Ram Sia Ram Sia Ram Jai Ram Ram Sia Ram Sia Ram Jai Ram Hare Krishna. Oh, oh, go, ahead. go ahead. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, one of the reasons I tried to study Ramayana a little bit, because my Gurudev in his early years was very much absorbed in Ramayana. And Gurudev always, even into his latter days, had such deep affinity for Ramayana. He would sometimes watch the Ramayana uh, videos and he would cry profusely watching these, these videos. I think, Vinay, anyone... The Gurudev estate can attest. Gurudev, when he'd speak Ram Mukata, yes. he would also cry very much. So he was very deeply absorbed in Ram. Lila. Yeah, we, okay. one time Srila Gurudev was in Houston and he was saying, and we were there and he was crying when he was talking, about, like he was speaking uh, the Harikatha of uh, Ramayana. So every, oh, many times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it, it was in relation actually to speaking about Gai Gai, uh, the yes being the hero yeah. and then mm -hmm. when Vishnu Prabhu he came up to speak and translate because Gurudev was speaking in Hindi and Vishnu Prabhu Prabhuji came up to translate in English so he also could not speak and he also began to cry too and he put mm -hmm. down the mic and he sat down but then Gurudev said why are you sitting you need to translate <laughs> yeah I tell you just thinking about it you know the Gurudev's mood you know my heart also is very touched in speaking Ram Kata. All right, but once you call Puturvisha, keep us in the way which are Patitana Pavino, Vaishna Vivi on the Monomaha. Jai, see Sikram Lakshman Han, Moki, Jai, Jai, Shuka Guru Devaki, Jai, Shuka Babaki, Jai, Guru Parampara, Ki, Jai, 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 Jai,